Uh, Dr. Mori, Uncivilized Vitality, and I want to talk today about uh, part of our salt and needle, uh, salt and needle kits, personal hygiene and uh, self-care and the care of our gear, but we'll do that part in another one. I want to talk about my first aid kit and my boo-boo box or my boo-boo bag. Uh, I carry mine in my Hill People Gear uh, chest rig just because that way they're always here and when I get to camp, I can set the, the bag off to the side or pull the components out as I need it. I have it marked with a medical emblem, so if uh, I'm the one that's in need of uh, medical care, somebody can come up and just uh, quickly deduce that there might be something inside this bag. So let's go over both of these uh, components. I keep my first aid kit just inside my, uh, in the main pocket, and then I can take this out and transfer it to my, uh, like my day bag or uh, the top lid of my backpack, depending on how I'm carrying it. But it's, it's here. I don't have... Um, uh, a fancy first aid or trauma bag blowout case for it here. I keep that in the Jeep or for some of the um, uh, other areas I have my first aid kit. So I have several of these blowout kits. We're going to do a trauma workshop, Uncivilized Vitality, uh, the local Turtles, uh, Genesee County Turtles chapter uh, later this summer toward the end of August where everybody will learn to use their blowout kit and uh, or first aid kit and uh, build their own to take home. So a first aid kit is the, the five minute kit. This is what I need in any serious emergency in the first five minutes. The other thing I carry in here is my uh, boo-boo box, which is what most people carry uh, as a first aid kit, uh, and it's, it's not the same thing. These are two, this is for minor inconveniences and non-life-threatening. This is for the first five minutes of an actual um, life-threatening event, and this is what you need minimum to carry on your person. So I'll go through these. Uh, in addition to what's in the kit, in the bag, I also carry some uh, roll of medical tape. I keep that separate because it has a lot of other uh, incidental uses. A, a glow stick or chem light just to, in case I have to uh, tag or um, mark somebody, not necessarily for seeing more clearly. I have a headlamp for that or a flashlight on me. And then I keep a, a Sharpie marker in here. So I'm gonna move this kit off to the side. Now let's go through uh, the trauma kit first, then I'll push these things out of the way. I just have a gallon size Ziploc bag, and I keep uh, enough in there to treat myself or one other person mainly. Uh, first up, I have uh, two sets of nitro gloves. They're non-sterile, but this is just uh, PPE for controlling exposure to bodily fluids, specifically of someone else. I keep a nasopharyngeal airway uh, NPA in there, uh, the 28 uh, 28 French size because this is a fit most people uh, even a, um, a younger person with the the lube in there uh, I wouldn't use this on myself but maybe somebody could read the directions and figure it out if I were in a position where I'm not breathing but I keep that in there uh, tourniquet I have the TMT style tourniquet uh, this is my secondary tourniquet I always keep one uh, in my pocket on my person so I always have at least the two tourniquets in there, I have a pressure bandage. Uh, this is the, the battle bandage, uh, I think from North American Rescue. I'm not sure who carries the battle bandage and the uh, battle wrap. This is like a plastic, like a super, uh, super tough uh, cling wrap, uh, like saran wrap, but it'll stick even through, uh, stick to itself even if it's uh, wet or uh, oily or bloody. So it's super stuff, uh, super uh, to carry. Not sure who, who carries these. I'll have uh, Tom uh, put those in the description. So I have a pressure bandage that has a little battle wrap with it incorporated or uh, you could get an Israeli bandage. Uh, this is a little smaller and some battle wrap. <clears throat> I also carry uh, some packing gauze. I carry some hemostatic uh, Z-fold packing gauze. This is the Sealox uh, rapid ribbon uh, to uh, help stop bleeding. I have a set of hyphen chest seals for both uh, entry and exit wounds for some sort of penetration to the body cavity, uh, especially the thorax. And lastly in my bag, I just have a um, foil mylar rescue blanket. So these few items um, in this kit, all contained in this bag so I can move it around, are for the first five minutes of life-threatening injury, and I would follow the uh, March algorithm. We talk about uh, preventing massive uh, bleeding or hemorrhage. I have several things to prevent uh, bleeding or control bleeding. Then we're going to talk about uh, the airway and make sure I have a, an airway and that I have any holes in my my ventilation system filled. Um, my respiration also taking care of my uh, 
my thorax, my ability to ventilate, not respirate, but that wouldn't fit the, the acronym so well. And then I can get onto circulation and tend to some smaller wounds or again, get into bleeding and check the pulse. And then the, the foil blankets for the hypothermia at the end. Uh, that's just a quick video on, or a quick coverage uh, in this video on what I carry in my uh, five minute kit, my first aid uh, trauma kit, blow out bag, whatever you want to call it. So I've set that off to the side. That would be for life-threatening injuries. Uh, you fall out of a tree, you get impaled, you have an, someone has an accident with uh, the hatchet or the saw or a knife uh, and gets, uh, gets a life-threatening injury. I can take care of that. I always have that on my person. I also carry my, I call it a boo-boo box, and just a little Altoid tin. Actually, this is a, a tin with a first aid thing on it. I forgot where I found that, but... Since this is Michigan, uh, most of the year we deal with a lot of ticks. So I always keep just on the outside a tick key. I use that once a night, maybe twice a day, look for ticks, use that to peel them off. So it's good to have a tick key. I keep a couple of uh, heavy duty rubber bands or uh, it's actually just a bike inner tube I cut into strips, sometimes called ranger bands if you want to sound tactical. cool. Uh, keep those off to the side, they're good for lots of different things. Oh, this was just a little Coleman first aid kit. Uh, it was. It was terrible, so I emptied the contents. I used a tin. Inside there, I carry a few things that you might need. Uh, I've got some ibuprofen, um, just in case there's um, an injury or for some reason need ibuprofen. I have a little 200 milligrams, some big 800s. I also usually carry a little strip of Benadryl in here, um, the diphenhydramine in case somebody has an allergic reaction. Uh, that can help. And uh, usually some a couple charcoal capsules uh, and some Imodium, but uh, those have been used up the last trip. I haven't gotten back to it. I wear contact lenses a lot when I'm out, so I carry these little ampules of saline in case I have to rinse or move something out of my eye. Uh, another pair of nitro gloves, again, if I'm tending to the boo-boo of someone other than myself. And then, just the standard, um, I keep several Band-Aids, just standard Band-Aid in there. Uh, a couple of Steri strips. Uh, just to close maybe a, a, a bigger uh, bigger cut and then I can use the packing gauze from and tape from my other other aspects of my kit to maybe fashion a larger bandage. A couple little antibiotic, uh, triple antibiotic ointments and first aid uh, burn cream in there. A razor blade, a couple safety pins. Okay, those can come in handy for gear. I carry a couple of iodine uh, wipes and usually some alcohol wipes in here, two of each for cleaning wounds or uh, disinfecting. And uh, the bonus of the iodine is I can squeeze a, a drip or two from the iodine into my water bottle uh, to, to um, purify water in an emergency. Uh, normally I just use the water filter or boil it. And then here in the bottom of the kit, I put, usually at the top, but I'd repack this for the video, uh, two knuckle bandages. It seems that I need the knuckle bandages more often in the um, on these campaigns out in the woods that I would a standard band-aid but uh, knuckle bandages and then at the very bottom a larger couple of bandages um, the heavy duty size maybe for uh, a blister on your heel or uh, just covering a larger cut and then of course the tin has several uses we can get into in maybe some more bushcrafty videos but this would be just my simple boo-boo box now if I had um, <clears throat> let's say someone along on the trip that had uh, special medical needs, I would encourage you to keep your meds in your boo-boo box, uh, your personal or specific meds in your boo-boo box so that you had them readily accessible. But sometimes people carry these overly large uh, first aid kits and they've got uh, suture kits and uh, other things that aren't necessary for a personal, uh, personal kit. You could pack all that into your uh, just a little boo-boo box and in my experiences these are about all I've ever actually needed out on the trail I used to carry these really elaborate large um, med kits uh, for myself and found out I didn't really need them as long as I have something to tend to my uh, any life-threatening injuries and then I can take care of the little uh, niggling injuries until I get back home in a couple days now if you are along on one of our um, uncivilized events that, those would be my personal kits, and I'd encourage people to carry that. But typically, if you go along one of our UV events, every guide that is along for the trip is carrying a blow, a full blowout kit. There's enough in each of these trauma kits, several tourniquets, several sets of the 
Sealock several sets of everything, enough to treat uh, two full individuals per kit. And uh, the guides have that. And then at base camp, we always have uh, the uncivilized trauma bag. Uh, we have oxygen. We have the full suture and minor surgery kits in here. We have uh, litters. We have um, uh, battery pack operated heated vests for hypothermia. We have everything in here you'd need for life-threatening emergencies when you can't get to uh, more advanced care within that first hour. So sometimes we're out for days and we got to be prepared for anything. So this would be the difference for an entire group, uh, up short of uh, small uh, surgical needs, more trauma bags for immediate five minute first aid for our official groups. And then myself, I always have a boo-boo kit and I bring with me a uh, blowout kit in a simple uh, garbage bag. So if you want to learn more about that or you have other comments, what's in your boo-boo box, uh, leave some comments below. If you're interested in doing more with the uh, the very, very, very basics in treating um, life-threatening trauma that first five minutes, especially in uh, wilderness scenarios, then um, contact us here at the channel or info at uncivilizedvitality.com and... Um, <clears throat> If you're interested in attending the classes or check out our Facebook group, or I'm not sure where Caitlin posts all those things to schedule, probably the website or something, something like that. So check those out and uh, let us know in the comments what you carry in your kit. And uh, like, the, like the video, share the, the video, subscribe to the channel. That's it.